Hey guys, I'm the MMA Breakdown, and today we're doing predictions for UFC Fight Night 99, Musasi versus Hall 2. Follow me on Twitter, my link's in the description, at MMA Breakdown 0. And there's still time to check out my predictions for both uh, the Tough Latin America 3 finale, as well as UFC 205, McGregor versus Alvarez. Uh, links to those videos will also be in the description. Um... Yeah, but this fight card with the main event falling out, um, it's just not that good. A, a fun matchup here and there, but um, they're doing the double header thing again, which I think is just ridiculous. Uh, I didn't like it the first time around, and I don't know why they're bringing it back now. And especially with two such um, pretty weak cards, the one uh, following this one up, uh, the Bader versus Nogueira card. There's some better matchups on that card, but still overall... It feels like, um, you know, your typical uh, international fight night filler. Um, and yeah, just two weak main events, two um, very mediocre back-to-back -back cards on the same day. Um, I'm just not excited for it uh, really at all. Uh, so the whole card is on Fight Pass, but the first fight on the preliminary card at Women's Bantamweight, Marion Renault versus Milana Dudieva. Um, I'm going to take Renault. She's fought a higher level of competition. She has an impressive win over Jessica Andrade. Um, didn't do so great against Holly Holm. Couldn't deal with the, the range kickboxing. Um, and their last fight against Ashley Evans-Smith um, outstruck her, outworked her on the feet. Uh, got robbed and lost the decision. I think everyone acknowledged that she got robbed. Um, but I think, yeah, she's just fought... Uh, a much higher level of competition than Dudieva, at least um, you know her win over Andrade and over Evan Smith. I think is better than uh, Dudieva's win over Elizabeth Phillips, um, which a lot of people didn't even think uh, she won. Uh, but yeah, against Elizabeth Phillips, that was a, a pretty sloppy, uneventful fight. Dudieva was on her back a lot. Um, on the feet, I remember her having the advantage, although you know. Nothing really significant happened. I just remember her throwing and landing more on the feet, but ending up on her back a lot. Um, and then Pena just crushed her. Um, she didn't. She was outclassed. You know, she Pena took her down the first round and then uh, smashed her with ground and pound. Um, so I'm going to take Renault. It's about the high level of competition. Has an impressive win in the UFC. Um, but I don't know with Renault, you know, um, she had the great win over Andrade, but I think um, we might be building her up, at least I am too much, uh, just based off of that win. I mean, against Evan Smith, she did win, but um, it wasn't really that impressive, and against home really didn't get anything done at all. Um, so I don't really know, and Dudieva, I think, is still kind of an unknown, you know, had a, a very... Um, mediocre win against uh, one of the worst fighters in the division and then got completely outclassed against um, one of the elite fighters. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, for some reason Dudieva wins, but um, I think Renault's the safer pick. I think she's uh, the overall higher level um, fighter, so I'm taking Renault. At welterweight, Zach Cummins versus Alexander Yakolev. Um, this is another kind of weird matchup. Um, I'm going to take Cummins. Yakolev, I just don't think, has the game to win decisions. He doesn't, um, you know, fight in a way that uh, really wins rounds. His offense isn't um, consistent over three rounds. And he struggled in the clinch before. Um, Nico Musoke uh, really controlled him in the clinch. Um, Gray Maynard, I thought Maynard won that fight. He was able to kind of out-rustle him for a couple rounds and control him. And then in his last fight against um, Kamaru Usman, he was really uh, dominated in the clinch and uh, taken down repeatedly. And Cummins is a big guy. We've seen him have success against Gunnar Nelson in the clinch. He controlled uh, a good grappler and... Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Um... I'm blanking on uh, the guy's name, the jiu-jitsu guy from Tough Brazil uh, that he beat. Um, so I think he can uh, have success in the clinch against Yakolev. Um, 
Yakolev, I think, uh, will be the better athlete, though. We saw his uh, knockout power, and you know when he starts to get going, starts to let his hands go, um, and you know hit those openings like he did against uh, uh, George uh, Sullivan. Um, he's really dangerous, and Cummins can be hit, and he can be uh, hit by guys who have a speed advantage over him, and we saw that very clearly in his last fight against. Um, Santiago Ponzinibbio. So I think there is a, a slight chance that Yakolev could uh, find an opening and knock out Cummins. But Cummins is also a good boxer. Um, I think he has um, a good, uh, varied uh, striking game. Um, you know, he looked really good against uh, Nicholas Dalby, although I don't know how much that win says in hindsight. Um, and Cummins has power too. So I'm going to take Cummins. I think he's good enough on the feet to not just get run over by Yakolev. I think he'll be able to clinch with him, um, maybe get some takedowns. Yakolev, um, you know, is pretty low volume and like I said, just doesn't uh, fight consistently enough uh, over three rounds to really get his name uh, marked on the on the scorecards. And Cummins uh, has a style um, that's much more suited to winning decisions. So I'm going to take Cummins here for a decision, but... Um, Watch out for that speed advantage that I expect Yakolev to have. <clears throat> At heavyweight, Justin Ledet versus Mark Godbeer. I'm going to have to skip over this one. Godbeer is uh, making his UFC debut. Um, he was a former Bellator fighter, had a loss to Czech Congo. Um, but Justin Ledet uh, looked great in his uh, debut against... Um, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember uh, the guy's name. Um... But his uh, his boxing, uh, I was very impressed by it. I can't remember you know seeing uh, boxing that looked that um, high level in the UFC ever before. Really um, had a great jab, uh, great timing on all of his strikes. Just looked very uh, comfortable on the feet, and um, you know was really uh, hurting his opponent with um, you know just basic. Um, you know, basic techniques like with the jab and uh, the cross. He had a lot of snap on his strikes. I really liked uh, Justin Ledet's boxing, and I'm excited to see him again. But, um, yeah, I won't be making a pick uh, for that one in this video. At women's strawweight, um, uh, Anna Elmos versus Amanda Cooper. Um, I think this one's a mismatch. I'm going to take Cooper. Anna Elmos uh, got finished by Jermaine Day uh, Randomy in her debut. Um, you know, it's outclassed in that fight and I expect Cooper to be again uh, the much more higher level uh, MMA fighter. Um, Cooper got dominated in the tough finale by <clears throat> Tatiana Suarez. Uh, she just wasn't uh, you know, a good enough wrestler to compete with her on the ground, got submitted. Uh, but on tough I thought she was pretty impressive. You know, Showed a good ground game against um, Lanchana Green uh, you know, took her down and uh, submitted her pretty easily, and also showed uh, some really good striking against Jamie Moyle, um, who was supposed to be a striker, and uh, Cooper had uh, the advantage on the feet. So I think Cooper's well-rounded, uh, a good boxer, and uh, has a wrestling game too. And then Al Elmos, you know, just um, getting taken out easily by Randomy. Uh, I have to think that Cooper. Um, you know, is the better fighter, so I'm going to take Cooper. Um, and I'm going to say, I think, by submission. All right, a lightweight Kevin Lee versus Magomed Mustafaev. Um, this one's a fun fight, and I've really been itching to see Mustafaev get back in there. Has had two fights in the UFC. Um, had a doctor stoppage win over uh, Piotr Hallman, and then had uh, a really uh, brutal... Um, TKO win over uh, Joe Proctor in the first round. Um, this to me is wrestling versus striking. Uh, I would expect Mustafaev to have an advantage on the feet. Kevin Lee is a really athletic fighter. He pushes a high pace even on the feet, but technically is not a very good striker. And we saw Leonardo Santos uh, just completely expose him on the feet. You know, knocked him out in uh, in the first round. And, you know, we had never seen anything like that from Santos before or after uh, that fight. 
Um, and even against Efrain Escadero, he clipped uh, Kevin Lee at one point in that fight um, and seemed to really give uh, Lee a lot of uh, problems on the feet. Um, but Lee's a very good wrestler, and we saw in his last fight against um, Jake Matthews that uh, he can make quick work of uh, even a talented fighter like Matthews who just um, isn't on his level uh, as far as wrestling goes because um, he took down Matthews easily, took his back, and uh, pounded him out with ease. I thought that was a really impressive performance. Um, so I don't know how Mustafaev's wrestling is. Um, you know, I haven't seen any of his fights pre-UFC. Uh, being the Dagestani fighter, I would expect him to, you know, have that uh, that wrestling game. Um, yeah, if Lee's able to get it to the ground um, and get the takedown easily, uh, I like him to win. But just considering, uh, you know, Lee's struggles on the feet against um, not great fighters and not great strikers and Escudero and Leonardo Santos. Um, I'm going to have to pick Mustafaev, who just uh, looked like a crusher against Proctor, a guy who just seems to uh, really go for the kill, um, you know, throws, throws uh, a lot of strikes, throws uh, big combinations, uh, you know, chasing the finish and seems to have brutal power. So... I'm going to go with Mustafaev, but uh, this is a good fight. Uh, you know, I think it'll be competitive. Um, yeah, like I said, wrestler versus striker matchup, but I'm going to go with uh, Mustafaev. I think he gets a TKO. Um, I'll say second or third round. All right, a flyweight Kyoji Horiguchi versus Ali Bagautinov. Um, I think Horiguchi should have this one in the bag. Bagotinov is a good fighter, former title challenger, um, but his last fight against Gene Herrera, who is not a bad fighter, but you know, kind of a, a work in progress, a developing fighter. Bagotinov had a great start against him. I think dropped him um, and was controlling him on the ground, you know, getting off ground and pound. But by the third round, you know, I let Herrera not only get back in the fight, but you know, Herrera had a. Um, what was it, I think, an arm, uh, a reverse arm triangle choke from bottom, from his back, and, he, you know, it almost put him out with that, you know, really low percentage submission, and, um, you know, to get caught in a position like that against uh, a lower level fighter in a fight that he was dominating, you know, doesn't give me much hope for Bogutinov going forward against elite competition, which Horiguchi is, um, and I think in the Joseph Benavides fight, we saw a similar matchup where Bogotinov just couldn't reach um, a guy who had better movement and who really used an in-and-out game, who was able to counter him really effectively. And uh, Horiguchi, um, I think, has an even uh, bigger advantage there against Bogotinov. You know, has the unorthodox movement, is really lightning fast, can get in and out, um, you know, a lot of speed and accuracy on his strikes. And probably even has bigger power than Bogotinov, who has who does have power, but I think Horiguchi might have the bigger power. So I'm going with Horiguchi. Um, I think he wins a decision. Horiguchi, uh, you know, is content to um, you know lay back in his fights and uh, not really chase the finish. You know, we've seen that uh, from him. You know, just coming off of a decision win over uh, Neil Siri and some other guys who he probably should have finished, like. Um, Louis Gaudino. So I'm going to take uh, Horiguchi. Um, I just think he's faster, um, a lot more athletic and explosive, and uh, will keep Bogotinov um, on the outside. Um, Bogotinov also is a good wrestler, but I think Horiguchi, again, will be too athletic and will just end up uh, stuffing takedown attempts or not even let Bogotinov get near him. So I'm taking Horiguchi for a decision. At middleweight, Magnus Seidenblad versus Jack Marshman. I'm going to have to uh, move past this one um, as well because Marshman is making his UFC debut and I haven't seen any footage on him. Uh, Magnus Seidenblad, I think, is a pretty decent fighter. And I thought in his uh, win, his last win over, um, what was the guy's name, the South African, uh, Garrett... Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, I thought he looked really improved, was really sitting down on his punches more than we had seen from him before, and, um, you know, cracked him with a clean shot that put him out. Uh, so, I like Seed and Blad. Um, 
you know, an, an aggressive fighter, maybe too uh, reckless at times, um, you know, a big fighter and, uh, you know, can uh, really get takedowns. Um, we've seen submissions from him. Um, yeah, I like seeing him blood, but um, I, I don't know. So uh, we're moving on to the last fight on the preliminary card of flyweight Ian McCall versus Neil Siri. Uh, this is a really good matchup, one of the best uh, on the card. Um, I feel like a prime McCall uh, would be too well-rounded, um, probably have a speed advantage against Siri, uh, and probably use his, uh, his wrestling game uh, to beat Siri. Um, but McCall's been out for a year and a half, hasn't fought since January of 2015. That's a long time, and Siri is an active fighter. You know, he's been getting fights in, um, and he's been improving, and he's been doing really well against elite competition. I mean, kind of got um, shut out against uh, Horiguchi um, and also Lewis Smolka, but he was in those fights, uh, you know, didn't get finished, and he was, uh, you know, he fights... Uh, Till the end. Um, so for those reasons, for the layoff, um, and also, you know, McCall is not a dangerous fighter. You know, there were fights in the UFC that he should have finished, like against Iliarte Santos, and you know that kind of turned into a a sloppy um, a sloppy striking battle where you know Santos was in that fight um, the whole time, even though. You know, McCall had the advantage and was clearly the better um, technician. Um, so, uh, you know, with Siri surviving against guys like Horiguchi and Smolka, I don't see McCall um, hurting him or being able to finish him. And like I said, a prime McCall, I think, could hit takedowns on Siri, but Siri really fights well off of his back. He's always threatening submissions, has a, a pretty active guard, a good um, defensive guard. Um and then on the feet, Siri is just very scrappy, uh, throws a lot of volume, always moving forward. And again, uh, you know, if he was able to, you know, put up a good fight and go three rounds with Horiguchi um, and Smolka, uh, I think he can do that against McCall, who um, I will expect to be rusty, um, not be as fast as, um, you know, he was when he was fighting uh, consistently. So I'm going to take Siri here to steal a decision. Um, yeah. All right. At featherweight, uh, onto the main card, Artem Labov versus Teruto Ishihara. Um, this is another interesting matchup. I know everyone uh, loves to, you know, crap on uh, Labov, and I don't think he's very good, but I do think he has um, a much more... Uh, varied and a much more consistent, uh, you know, as far as as far as his output goes, uh, striking game than uh, Teruto Ishihara. Ishihara does have power, though. Um, you know, he can really find openings. And uh, his, his last fight against Horacio Gutierrez, you know, he hit that uh, that knockout shot, moving backwards as Gutierrez was uh, chasing him down, um, but. You know, I think Labov uh, has enough of a a well-rounded striking game. Um, you know, he has leg kicks that he mixes in well with his strikes. And we saw against Gutierrez, even though the fight was really quick, Gutierrez was landing some leg kicks and um, it seemed to be giving uh, Ishihara some fits early. Uh, I think Labov can outstrike him um, over three rounds. Uh, I wonder about the wrestling. Um, you know, Ishihara had a tough fight against uh, who was it? Was it uh, Mizuto Hirota? Uh, I think the guy who he fought to win um, uh, the Road to Japan um, show. Uh, and you know, he grappled a little bit in that fight. Um, he didn't look too bad. Uh, Ishihara should be the better athlete. But, um, yeah, I like, uh, I like Labov. I'm going to take him to win a decision. I know he hasn't been impressive in the UFC, but both guys have a common opponent in Julian Arosa, and both of them uh, finished him uh, very easily in the first round. And Labov, even uh, for as unimpressive as he's looked in the UFC, he was clearly head and shoulders above his competition on tough, um, at least leading up to the finale. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to take Lobov. Uh, I think he has the more well-rounded striking game. Uh, I don't think he's going to get caught by a big shot from Ishihara. He was, um, you know, he did fall apart in the Alex White fight and started to get uh, hit with some big shots that seemed to kind of wobble him uh, later in the fight as the fight went on. Um, but Ishihara, I think, is still kind of unproven. He has impressive wins, but against a, a low level of competition. I don't know that Labov's uh, level of competition has been any lower than that of Ishihara, so I'll take Labov to win a decision. And then at heavyweight, Timothy Johnson versus Alexander Volkov, um, another debuting fighter in Volkov. Uh, I haven't watched footage on him, so I'm not going to make a pick here. Um, he's a former Bellator fighter. Uh, Timothy Johnson, I think, is a decent heavyweight, though. Um, probably a good mid-level heavyweight. Um, you know, showed uh, he had good enough striking to get a win over Marcin Tybora, um, who may have had UFC jitters in his first fight because he looked a lot better against uh, Victor Pesta in his follow-up fight. Um, but Johnson you know, was able to outstrike him for three rounds, had that uh, nice finish against... Uh, Abdul or um, Sh Shamil Abdul uh, you know, hit the takedown and uh, immediately pounded him out from there. Um, and then should have had the win over Jared Rochalt, uh, but he showed a low uh, fighting IQ in that fight. He continually chose to clinch with Rochalt, where he did not have the advantage, kept getting put on the fence. Uh, when he had a big advantage on the feet and uh, you know dropped Rochalt a couple of times. Uh, in that third round. Um, so I like Johnson, uh, mid-level heavyweight, but um, I, I can't uh, make a pick without knowing Volkov. All right, the co-main event, at lightweight Ross Pearson versus Stevie Ray. Uh, this is a fun matchup. Um, this was supposed to be, what was the original matchup? Uh, Kraus versus uh, Pearson, which uh, would have also been uh, a good matchup. Um, Ross Pearson should have the experience advantage, should have uh, the technical striking advantage, um, but I think Ray is the more dangerous fighter and will have the power advantage and he really um, goes for the finish uh, in his fights and um, you know, at least against uh, Leonardo Mafra, um, he was effectively able to you know find his chin pretty early in that fight. Um, Ross Pearson's really, uh, even though he's on a losing streak, I think he's really uh, looked better um, in his past couple of fights. You know, I think he's fighting uh, the most elite guys uh, that he's fought in his careers over his past couple of fights in uh, Masvidal and um, Will Brooks. And I actually personally thought he won the Brooks fight. I thought he looked really good in that fight. He was really using a lot of forward movement, um, you know, hit... Uh, Brooks with some big shots and for the most part had pretty good takedown defense. Um, and then against Masvidal, it was the same thing. I thought he showed good uh, forward pressure um, and just kind of barely got edged in both of those fights. And I think a lot of people don't recognize that. They just uh, look at um, that as two losses. Um, and who is Pearson's last fight? There's another fight in there, wasn't there? No, okay, just Will Brooks and uh, Jorge Masvidal. So yeah, I think uh, Pearson has really uh, kind of showed up against really good guys in his last couple of fights. But I think he just still suffers uh, against guys who have power and are just willing to bite down and throw and come forward. Like the Iaquinta fight, um, you know, he was eventually able to overwhelm Pearson and clip him. Um, and then he has a lot of uh, TKO losses in his past uh like Cub Swanson, even Cole Miller back in the day was able to clip this guy who's not um, a power striker. Um, and Stevie Ray, I just think, has that grit. Um, he's willing to come forward and throw. And I think Stevie Ray might have a grappling advantage here. You know, Pearson uh, was outgrappled by Trinaldo, um, badly outgrappled by Evan Dunham. And Ray, I think, is a, a strong guy. He's physical on the ground. We saw that against uh, Marching Bandel. Uh, where he's able to uh, hold him down and uh, pound him out with ground and pound. So I like uh, Ray to get the win here, and I don't think he, he'll he win a decision. Um, so I'm going to take him uh, by decision. I think he gets uh, a late TKO. I'm going to say third round 
TKO for uh, Ray. All right. Um, and then the main event, a middleweight, Gegard Mousasi versus Uriah Hall, uh, the rematch. I really don't have much to say about this fight. Um, I know Musasi's a big favorite. Everyone is uh, really high on him, and uh, deservedly so, since that Hall loss. And, you know, by the way, uh, Musasi was dominating that fight. His grappling looked spectacular. Um, mounted Hall, I believe, uh, in that fight before getting caught with, um, what was it, a spinning wheel kick? Um yeah, Musasi has looked uh, really, really great since then. Um, you know, had coming off of the win over Belfort. Um, he still got hit in that fight a few times, uh, but stayed composed and um, picked his shots, was able to chip away at Belfort, and we got him on the ground, you know, dominated him. Um, and then, uh, who did, oh, uh, it was um, Tiago Santos before that, who was on a big streak. Um, you know, it looked like a really dangerous Muay Thai striker. Musasi made quick work of him. Um, and Musasi's just seemed to be, uh, really making a concerted effort to be more offensive in his last couple of fights, um, than he, he ever has, uh, before in his career. Um, you know, really chasing the finish, looking to be more dangerous and, uh, you know, working towards the finish, landing those kill shots, um, and Hall has just uh, gone downhill, it seems, uh, since that went over over uh, Musasi. Uh, after that, he you know he's come off the knockout loss to Derek Brunson, and was it the Whitaker loss? Uh, yeah, it was the Whitaker loss. Um, after that one, uh, there wasn't another. Yeah, Whitaker and uh, Brunson losses after that, um, or against Whitaker. Uh, you know, came back to win the third round, but still had that classic problem of pulling the trigger early in the fights, even got uh, taken down uh, in that Whitaker fight. And then uh, Brunson just ran him over in the first round, you know, knocked him out. So, you know, the first fight, um, let me use my hands here for a second. They were kind of even and Musasi's just gone like that and Hull's gone downhill. So I have to take Musasi, but I will say that... Um, I think the same thing has a chance of happening in this fight um, where Musasi's just uh, caught with a big shot and put out because he is still hittable. Um, we saw that in the Belfort fight. Um, you know, Musasi is not an untouchable guy and Hall, um, you know, has those unorthodox strikes. He's very athletic, so I think there's a chance that he could catch Musasi, but... I don't think it should happen. I think Musasi will be more, uh, more defensive and uh, you know will be more cautious uh, to not let something like that happen again. Um, and with him just being more dangerous, uh, I think he's going to really uh, press Hall more. Um, and I think he could get that late finish because uh, Hall, you know, really sits back, um, has trouble pulling the trigger, kind of freezes up. And uh, Musasi uh, has just really been more dangerous and looking for that finish lately. So I think he could uh, take down Hall, open up with ground and pound, maybe submit him uh, late in the fight. So I'm taking uh, Musasi by finish. Um, I'm going to say third round. All right, guys, thanks uh, for watching. That's it for my predictions for this uh, event. And I will have my video up for the... Uh, event taking place on the same day as this fight night 100 Bader versus uh, Little Nog again follow me on Twitter at MMA Breakdown uh, check out my predictions for Tough Latin America 3 finale UFC 205 uh, those links will be in the, in the description I'll see you next time guys bye